For the visually challenged, the following program begins with an introduction from Ranger Karen inside Esplanade Studios. The trio is arranged from left to right with drums, bass, and piano. The backdrop to the performance is centered by a church organ that is framed by two wooden doors. The musicians are set up on a wooden floor and microphones are placed around the trio in various places. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the following presentation. Hi, I'm Ranger Karen with the New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park. We're one of more than 400 parks in the National Park Service, but we're the only one that's dedicated to the uniquely American art form of jazz. And we're here in New Orleans where jazz was born. Jazz was first played here in the early 1900s, but it's still a living, evolving art form. And one of the things that we do to promote the appreciation of jazz is to present live performances of local New Orleans musicians. So today we're very excited to have the Dwight Fitch Jr. Trio featuring Peter Harris on bass and Simon Lott on drums. I hope that you'll share this video with your friends and enjoy the show. Now the Dwight Fitch Jr. Trio. Well, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so glad that you're here. Um, sit back, relax, enjoy the music. We're going to play some jazz for you. And um, as stated earlier, you know, jazz is um, an American musical art form and cultural expression that really came out of the, um, the black African-American experience. You know, central uh, to that expression is uh, what we know today as the blues. And in honor of um, the blues, we're going to play um, a piece by one of jazz's uh, most prolific composers. His name was uh, Duke Ellington, incredible pianist, composer, arranger, orchestrator. We're going to do a piece by his entitled Things Ain't What They Used To Be. Hope you enjoy it.
Before we move on, I want to say that um, blues is the parent of all legitimate jazz. And um, as we know, parents have children. And so they're like, blues had two children, so to speak. Uh, one was jazz. And uh, jazz took on more of a secular form of uh, the cultural expression. You know, we heard it in bars and clubs. And, and then the other side, the other child, if you will, would be uh, gospel music. Same roots, uh, just different uh, functions um, and purposes for the music. And so with that in mind, uh, we're going to continue with a piece uh, of actually a, a very well-known hymn uh, called Amazing Grace um, into a Horace Silver composition entitled uh, The Preacher. Thank you. 
Yeah. I get home right now. Give it up for Mr. Simon Lott on the drums and Peter Harris on the bass. And so jazz, um, it's really evolved um, over uh, the years, over the decades. And with that, we're going to play um, a piece in tribute to what we would call uh, the swing era. This was like a period in jazz between, like some might say, the 1935 to 1945. And this was a time where, you know, jazz was the popular music that you would hear on the radio. You had big bands and, you know, bands like the great Duke Ellington who had a big band. Of course, you had um, other bands like Benny Goodman and Count Basie. And so uh, we're going to play something in tribute to that era. And uh, the name of this piece is called Sweet Georgia Brown. And we'd like to feature our drummer on this.
Sweet Georgia Brown, Mr. Simon Lott on the drums, Peter Harris on the bass, our tribute to the swing era. We're going to um, continue. As uh, you know, jazz began to progress, and it's like every decade brought um, something new, you know? Uh, maybe like you could look at it like a, like a tree might evolve, in a sense, and develop new branches. And in a similar way, um, you know, after the swing era, you... Uh, big bands, you moved into a period where you began to have a lot more emphasis on smaller ensembles and you had uh, where the music transitioned into what we know as the bebop era. And there we, you know, the, heard the music of people like um, Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie, trumpeter, and um, Thelonious Monk, and a uh, great pianist and composer. Also, uh, musicians like uh, the great Miles Davis began to emerge, um, you know, during that um, bebop era. We're going to continue uh, with a standard, um, and that's one of the things that uh, jazz musicians do, often take um, popular songs that, you know, were popular through uh, American musicals on Broadway and would uh, use those standards all uh, those songs as uh, vehicles for creative expression and uh, innovation. A great model of that was um, someone, as I mentioned, by the name of Miles Davis. And one of the songs that he uh, often recorded uh, with his bands, even as these bands began to shift and morph and evolve uh, through the decades, he would play this, um, this song. It's called Green Dolphin Street, and we're going to um, play that at this time. Hope you enjoy it.
everybody show some love for Mr. Simon Lott on the drums and Mr. Peter Harris on the bass. And I'm Dwight Fish Jr. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>